Hello, welcome back again. My name is Nick Huntington Klein. Uh, this is a series of videos related to my book, The Effect, which you can find for free on theeffectbook.net, uh, or you can also find links to purchase there. So uh, in this video, we're gonna be talking more about identification. So in the last video, we talked about the data generating process, the set of sort of laws that determine what, where our data comes from. Why do we see the observations in the world that we see? And these laws, this data generating process is there whether we know about it or not. And our goal is to use the observations that we do have to figure out what it looks like. That's our goal here, right? Uh, so we want to use the observations that we see in the world to understand how the world works, how it came to be. And so this gives us a problem because this is actually very difficult to do. For any given set of observations, there's usually a number of different possible data generating processes that could have generated that data. And identification is the process of, of pinning down uh, that when you have that you try to go from observation to some sort of theoretical conclusion uh, that you are actually doing it in the right way. So in the context of causal inference, often the question that we have is, does this one variable cause another variable? Right, so if we went and we reached in and we changed the value of this variable, would this other variable change as a result? That's the idea of causality that we're working with here. And the problem that we will often see with identification is that what we can see in the data is not whether this variable caused this variable, but rather we see that these two variables tend to be related to each other. We can see the conditional distribution of this variable. We can see that at different values of this variable, we tend to get different conditional means of this variable, but that by itself doesn't necessarily tell us why that relationship exists. Uh, and our goal is to sort of narrow down the possible set of explanations so that we can figure out, yeah, okay, there really is some sort of causal effect of this one on this one. So in a lot of causal inference applications, the real question is, what are all the different reasons why two things might be related to each other? And then we want to pin down just the one that we are actually interested in, the one that actually answers our research question. So let's say, for example, that we're doing a classic econometrics example. We're looking at the relationship between how much schooling you have and how much you earn in the labor market. All right, that's what we're going to be looking at. Uh, and so you can say you can look in the data and you can observe that, oh, yeah, it looks like people who have more education on average earn more money in the labor market. Uh, but you can immediately think of a bunch of reasons why that relationship might be in the data other than just education causing your earnings to increase. Uh, maybe it's that people who are just going to be better workers anyway choose to get more education. That could be one explanation. It could be that uh, people who live in uh, richer areas tend to get more education they, and they earn more because they're in, er in areas where they're going to get more. Uh, maybe people who uh, have it in their mind that they happen to be really good at uh, particularly highly paid jobs. Like if you if you have just the natural aptitude to be an engineer, maybe you didn't need to go to school, but you're like, hey, engineering school sounds pretty great to me. I'm going to go get it. And then we would see an, a relationship in the data. So the fact that we have these alternate explanations doesn't mean that the original one that we're interested in, does education increase your earnings, isn't there. It just means that if we want to find it, we got to dig through all the other bits until we can sort of pull out just the part that we are interested in. One way in which this is commonly done is with experiments. You've heard of them, I assume. Uh, so you're interested in the effect of education on your earnings and you happen to somehow find a setting where people will let you randomize how much education they get in their lives. That's neither here nor there. Uh, but uh, then you do that. And so once you do that, then you can look at the relationship between the randomly assigned education levels that you've given people and their earnings. Uh, and the key there, the, the reason why we might do a randomization like that is because in that, in that example, we've gotten rid of all the other reasons why these two things might be related to each other, right? You know, let's think about what we saw before. Maybe people who just, who were gonna earn more money anyway are gonna choose to get more education for some reason. Uh, well, that can't happen anymore because that didn't happen in your data. In your data, the only reason people got more education is because you assigned them to get more education. And you, if you did that randomly, that has nothing to do with their earn what their earnings would have been later on. That's the whole pur purpose of doing this sort of explicit randomization is that it allows you to sort of pick out some data for which there is no alternate explanation. So identification is super duper easy uh, because if you say, hey, I found that these two things are related to each other, uh, you'd say, I, I'm pretty sure it's because of one thing causing another because I got rid of all the other alternate explanations. All the other alternate explanations you can imagine for why these two variables might be related to each other, I've chucked them out. I have identified my effect of interest. Experiments are the only way in which we can do this, right? We just need to be able to think about what those alternate explanations are and close them off in some way. There are a bunch of ways that we can close off those alternate explanations, some of which we've already talked about, like conditioning on a variable, doing a conditional conditional distribution. 
there are other methods that we're going to talk about a bit later. But let's put an example sort of into action. So let's bring back good old lamp. So let's say that I'm interested uh, in what the causal effect of pulling this string is on the lamp turning on. And so I might collect some data. I might you know pull the string and I see the lamp goes on and now it's off and now it's on again. So this seems like a pretty strong correlation, right? There's a pretty strong relationship between me pulling that string and the light going on. But the process of identification is not just taking that for granted, right? If, I mean, if you just sort of assume that that's what's happened, that, that, that the string is responsible for all that, then yeah, we're sort of done. But you want to think, well, what are the other reasons I might observe that those two things would be so strongly correlated? Well, and then you start to getting into the alternate explanations. And, and as you get these alternate explanations, it sort of lays out for you what your job is in how you, what, what you're going to need to account for in your analysis. So you might think, okay, well, you know, uh, maybe it's not uh, that I am causing the light to go on. Maybe I'm just timing my poles with when I knew the light was going to go on anyway. Uh, so that's an alternate explanation. Maybe it's the fact, maybe it's some other knowledge about when the light's going to go on that's making me choose to turn it on, which makes it look like they're related, even if they're not really. So how could we account for that? Well, maybe we can do some explicit randomization. I'm going to flip a coin, and if it's heads, I'm going to pull the string, and if it's tails, I am not. So let's flip this coin. Okay, heads, I'm gonna pull the string. Okay, great. Now that was not my choice to do so. It was the coin's random choice. So now that's gonna sort of help. If I do this a bunch of times, let's flip it again, right? Oh, it's heads again, so I'm gonna pull it. It looks like it went off again. So based on the randomness of the coin, which is not based on my knowledge of whether the lamp might have turned on or not, uh, it seems like that's, that relationship is still there, right? So after removing that other potential explanation that I gave that I've sort of rigged the game, uh, then you still see a relationship that is going to lend evidence towards the idea that it is in fact me pulling this string that makes the light go on. And you can think of a bu bunch of other possible explanations like this and how we might be able to get rid of those alternate explanations, right? Perhaps, for example, uh, it is not that me pulling this light, this, uh, this string turns the light on off. Maybe this string actually controls all the electricity in my house and that's what's really going on. And so in that case, yeah, sure, the string is causing the lamp to go on or off, but really it's causing the electricity to go on or off. Well, in that case, I could pull the light and I could check whether other uh, things in my house tend to be turning on or off at the same time. Uh, if that doesn't seem to be the case, then I have pushed that explanation to the side. It's another possible reason why these two things are related to each other that I have gotten rid of. And you can keep going on in this way, right? And when it's something a lot more complex than a lamp turning on, of course, the list of possible explanations gets a lot longer. I'm sure you can sit here all day and think of possible reasons why we might observe education and earnings to be related in the data. And that's a lot of alternate explanations to have to deal with. But that is the task before us. We have to figure out what is the reason why these two things are related that we are actually interested in. That really clarifies for us a part of the data generating process we want to learn about. And then if we want to isolate just that part, we need to find some way of getting rid of all the other explanations to making sure that in the data that we are looking at, we have found some way to carve off all those other alternate explanations to be sure that either they're not actually happening or we've removed their influence by perhaps doing some sort of conditioning. And once we only have left over the explanation that we're interested in, if there's still something there, then we have gotten rid of all the possible alternative explanations. We know that what we're looking at answers our research question of interest. We have identified the causal effect that we want. Now, there's a lot of ways to do that, and that's what a lot of the, the remaining videos in this series are going to be about, and there's a lot of those, uh, but uh, uh, that's, the, that's, that's the task. All right, that's what we're going to be doing, and I hope that you'll keep with me for that. Thank you. Thank you.